I got my first smartwatch recently and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I like this one because it looks swaggy like a regular watch, but this one doesn't make me do like circle geometry every time I want to know what time it is. This is the Galaxy 6 Classic, by the way, but I've never owned a smartwatch before. So me being a Twitch streamer, I wanted to know what kind of useful things I could do around my studio. Like imagine if you're a cooking streamer, like surely one of you guys is a cooking streamer, right? How cool would it be if you could like change camera angles in OBS without having to walk all the way to your computer? Or what if you could control like your studio lights? Maybe you got those cool Elgato key lights that are like Wi-Fi controlled. Or hell, maybe even read Twitch chat off your watch while you're cooking up your like killer filet mignon recipe. Honestly, I was very disappointed by the lack of available tools out there for streamers that have smart watches. It seems like all the cool things you could do with the smartwatch are fitness related and I'm a Twitch streamer. You think I go to the gym? So I did some research, did a little bit of tinkering around and I managed to do some pretty cool stuff with my watch. Changing scenes in OBS, controlling my music, my studio lights, even those fancy PTZ cameras. You know those cameras that like track you when you go around the room? Yeah, I've been messing around with those lately and I figured out how to control them from my watch. So yeah, I just wanted to share my experience for those of you that have a smartwatch or those of you looking to get a smartwatch or those of you that are just bored and need a break from your real life problems. Thanks again, VIP SCD Keys for sponsoring this video. If you guys need a Windows 11 key, you can get them for as low as $21. Just use my code NUTTY to get them for 30% off. And if you wanna save a little bit more money, you can get a Windows 10 key for as low as $15 and then upgrade that to Windows 11 for free. Make sure to use a secure payment method like PayPal at checkout. They'll send you an activation code and then and then you're good to go. You just go in your Windows settings and then you put it in, you're done. Check out VIP SCD keys in the link down below and get yourself a Windows key today or when, when, when you, whenever you need it. The main thing I wanted to do with my watch is control OBS. This is the most obvious thing that you'd want to do as a Twitch streamer. And I figured that somebody must have made like an app for that or something, right? Like surely somebody made a Stream Deck app that's more suited to a smartwatch form factor, right? I couldn't find anything. I looked on a Google Play Store to find anything to control OBS or anything stream related and I just couldn't find anything but I didn't want to let that stop me. This watch runs Wear OS, which is essentially just Android, but skinned for a smartwatch form factor. So in theory, it should be possible to just load up any Android app on the watch, right? Turns out, uh, yeah, you actually kind of can do that. You can sideload regular Android apps onto the watch. Obviously not every app works. For one, this is a tiny ass, small circular screen, but sideloading Android apps onto this actually isn't that bad. You just need to enable developer settings, which is not that hard to do and turn on web debugging. I had to disable Bluetooth because apparently smartwatches hate connecting to Wi-Fi while Bluetooth is enabled. But once you do that, there's an app App called Bug Jager that you can install onto your phone. And basically what this app does, it allows you to send apps over Wi-Fi to your watch. So theoretically, any app that you have on your phone, you could just send that to the watch. It's not that hard to do. And the first thing I installed was the Elgato Control Center app. This is the app that you use to control those fancy Elgato key lights. And I have five of them around my studio. So it'd be really cool if I could just control my key lights from my watch. And surprisingly, that actually worked. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was able to like scroll through all my lights, turn them all on and off, even change like the brightness and the color temperature all from my watch. The screen is really small though. So you miss out on some of the buttons that are in the top left and right corner. And also this watch has this cool thing. It's got like this rotating bezel, which I love the rotating bezel. It just doesn't work with this app. But other than that, it works pretty much perfectly. There's so many times when I leave my studio and I accidentally leave my lights on and it's so nice to just be able to open up my watch and turn them on and off. The next obvious thing to do, Stream Deck. I tried to install the official Elgato Stream Deck app onto the watch and again, it launched fine. We're two for two, baby. Unfortunately, as soon as you start the setup process, uh, one of the first things it asks you to do is scan a QR code. And I don't know if you've noticed, this is a watch. It doesn't have a camera, so I can't scan the code. This was so close to working, but 
we just got blue balled right at the finish line. There are other apps we can try, right? There's so many Stream Deck alternatives on the Google Play Store, and truly, one of those works, right? Well, we tried Deckboard, and that one installs fine, but it crashes immediately as soon as you launch it on the watch. Same with the Overdeck app, that one crashed too. Touch Portal did install, but the screen is so small that I couldn't even get past the setup process. But remember a few weeks ago when I showed you guys how to set up these web-based Stream Deck-like things with StreamerBot? I made a video showing you how to create like this little Stream Deck-like page that can be opened up in any web browser and that includes smartwatches. StreamerBot has its own Stream Deck alternative that only requires a web browser. So you just set up all of your buttons on your computer and it creates a URL. And anything that can open that URL, in theory, should be able to control OBS. And that actually works super well. I installed the Samsung internet app on my watch, which is basically just a web browser for your watch. And all I had to do was send that URL to my watch. Kind of annoying to do because it's a watch. The way that I did it was I opened up the URL in my desktop Chrome browser, synced the bookmarks to my phone, and then I opened it on Chrome on my phone, and then I opened it again on the Samsung internet app on my phone, and then I synced those bookmarks to my watch. It's a super convoluted method, but eventually we got it to the watch and it, it it actually looks good. I set up some buttons for changing scenes in OBS. I also have some media controls down here so I could simply pause and skip to the next track for my watch. And because this is streamer bot, I could also control Twitch chat. So if I want to put my chat into emote only mode, I can do it right here. Everything on this web page works exactly the same as it would if you loaded the page on your phone or your computer, but it's just on your watch now. So you have the whole power of StreamerBot at your disposal here. And if you know how to code, it's not a requirement, by the way, you guys always think that you need to know how to code to use StreamerBot. But if you do know how to code, you can do some really cool stuff with this. I have these PTZ cameras that track me as I walk around my studio. These are from Obsbot. And I just wrote a little bit of code that allows me to physically point these cameras to different points around my studio. Normally, I'd have to control these cameras through my stream deck and I'd have to constantly keep walking back to my desk to press the buttons and then walk around the room again. But now, I can just freely walk around the room and just control it from wherever I am inside the room. If you guys are going to try this out, once you have this streamer bot deck on your watch, you can save that deck as a bookmark so it's easier for you to access or even save it as a tile. One quick tip I would highly recommend is go into your display settings of your watch and change the show last app to one hour. I found it super annoying that every time I would change scenes and then put my wrist down, it would automatically minimize the browser. So I'd have to go back, navigate to the browser app and then open up the bookmark again, which takes some time and it kind of defeats the purpose of having something super easy to access at your wrist. So if you change that setting to one hour, your deck will always be on your watch whenever you need it. Now, when you're making your deck pages, keep in mind, you do lose a little bit of access to the corner tiles unless your smartwatch happens to be a square smartwatch. Those ones look cringe, by the way, okay? I only use the smartwatches that are circular. I set my deck size to three by three, which gives me access to nine buttons. And even though the corners do get cut off a little bit, it still was really easy to access those buttons in the corner. But if you set the deck size to four by four or higher, definitely leave the corners empty because you can't even touch them from the watch. One of the annoying things I'm noticing is apparently every Wear OS watch has this really annoying feature where every time you turn your wrist away, it like dims the screen and that is super annoying when you're trying to use this stream deck page turns out there's a hidden feature called ungaze that you can't access through the settings at all the only way to turn that setting off is to use the command line so there's a command line utility called adb and basically you connect to it using this command here and this command and then once you've connected to your watch you can send it this command here with a zero at the end and that should turn the feature off so as you can see i can i can turn my wrist away now and now the screen will stay on i'll leave a link in the description if you want to know how to turn that setting off now since i already have a web browser on my watch i figured 
why don't we just try to put Twitch chat on our watch? Uh, it sounds really dumb, I know. Like, isn't the text gonna be tiny? Who wants to read that? But for certain situations, it actually makes a lot of sense. I build a lot of keyboards on my stream, and sometimes it's really annoying to have to constantly lift my head back and forth every time I want to read Twitch chat. But with a watch, I can just keep my head down, work on what I need to work on, and just glance over at my watch every once in a while. It's surprisingly readable too. You just open up Twitch chat as a pop-out window, and then set it to dark mode because it's light mode by default for some reason. And this works okay. It's not a great experience. I would love to be able to use the rotating bezel to scroll through chat so uh, I don't have to like use my finger to scroll through it. Uh, that doesn't work here. One of my viewers did make a simple like Twitch chat client that does allow me to scroll through with the bezel. And it's also formatted much better for a small screen like this. And this is much better than the normal Twitch pop out window. It's much more readable. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. It's a bit of work to get these tools set up on the watch. And that streamer bot deck page isn't super ideal for a watch form factor. It'd be really cool to see some developers try to tackle the design that fits more of this small circular screen. Maybe the streamer bot devs can make a new list view for their deck pages instead of a grid view, and maybe maybe then it will be scrollable with the with the bezel. Or maybe a company like Elgato can take a stab at making a stream deck app specifically for smartwatches. I have no idea if that's something they've ever considered before. If you have Tell me. I want to have the inside deets. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever done anything cool with your smartwatch? I'd really love to see what you guys can come up with. There's got to be at least one dude out there who's built something super crazy for their watch that I've never even considered. Feel free to send me a video on Twitter. Tell me about it in the comments below. And then also come watch me on Twitch. All of the cool research that we did for this video and all the tinkering around, we actually did that on my live stream. So I stream there twice a week. And uh, yeah, we're probably going to be doing more stuff like this in the future. So if you don't want to miss that, you better come watch the streams. They're really cool. All right. See you later, guys.